we go now to Susan Crabtree, White House and national political correspondent at Real Clear Politics. Susan, great to see you again. Um, it has been a rather tough week for President Biden after his son Hunter was indicted and House Republicans launched an impeachment inquiry. Let's talk more about that and what type of impact do you think it will have, if any, on the president's reelection bid? Well, certainly it's front and center right now. You have um, Americans are deeply divided on whether they believe President Biden had uh, any wrongdoing in his son's business. Uh, we're looking at the polls and they're basically clear as mud. Uh, you can maybe you might expect that it's a very a partisan divisions at play here. So far, we're seeing that roughly half of Americans believe that the Justice Department is not treating Hunter Biden uh, in a fair and nonpartisan way in the investigation at all. And one in three are highly concerned that President uh, Biden may have done something improper in his son's business. But you see that breaking down very strongly on partisan lines. Uh, Republicans, 66 percent of Republicans believe that Biden is in some way uh, had some wrongdoing there. And only 7 percent of Democrats uh, are very concerned or uh, somewhat concerned about whether Joe Biden was involved in improper dealings with Hunter Biden's business uh, partners overseas. So, you, you know, I don't know what this contends in terms of for the impeachment itself. You have equally equal divisions there. You have a late, uh, the latest Fox News survey found that you know, about 47 percent of registered voters believe that the inquiries are legitimate, that these Republican uh, impeachment inquiry is legitimate, and 48 percent think it's bogus attempt to undermine Biden's presidency. So the American public is deeply divided, um, and we've seen this for years, and they're equally divided on um, this impeachment inquiry. Susan, I want to talk now about former President Donald Trump and those comments he made to NBC's Kristen Welker on Meet the Press. Uh, she asked him, you know, if he would support an abortion ban at 15 weeks, to which he did not give a yes or no. And then he referenced Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and basically said a six-week abortion ban is terrible. Susan, how do you think these comments are being received, especially among his base, which is largely pro-life? In fact, he's referred by many uh, as the most pro-life president in U.S. history. Well, I, I was taken, uh, I think that he, it was interesting to me that uh, on Friday, he was appearing before the Family Research Council, a uh, big summit that they had. Many candidates, uh, Republican candidates were there, and he won that straw poll, hands down. 63 percent to 27 percent for DeSantis and the other candidates getting around 2 percent or less than 2 percent. Uh, but here we have it, it, just on my, on Sunday, he seems to have really gotten himself into trouble with conservative traditional uh, values voters. You had Catholic Vote, uh, a group that's an advocacy group for Catholic conservatives, come out and just basically issue a statement just hours ago saying they really are concerned about Donald Trump's views on abortion, what he said in that interview uh, on Meet the Press. And a direct quote, he cannot expect to win again without us, with basically without Catholic voters. And any Republican presidential hopeful must draw a clear contrast to the extreme taxpayer-funded unlimited abortion agenda of Joe Biden. That's directly from the president of Catholic Vote. Uh, they're deeply disappointed, uh, but I don't know how this is going to. He had some time to to change his views. Um, like your a reporter said, sometimes these interviews go in a different direction. And Kristen Welker, who is a longtime White House press corps, uh, I know her personally, uh, she was very, very, hit him very hard in that interview. I thought did an excellent job in getting him to answer the questions. But it was a lot of rapid fire on abortion. And he's, he's very good at condemning DeSantis, calling him desanctimonious. Uh, on his six and and referring to his six week abortion ban uh, as a terrible idea, uh, but he also would not commit to whether he would uh, support a federal abortion ban. Susan, we have about forty five seconds left or so. But curious, what else you're following right now? Well, certainly the government shutdown is on everybody's minds. Uh, we have uh, a vote looming in the House. Kevin McCarthy finds himself, as so many uh, speakers have, on a, in a very difficult position with his right wing uh, trying to push him not to, to actually, you know, to the brink of a government shutdown. Uh, hopefully it won't get that far uh, because it's a very, uh, not a very good situation for Republicans. Um, 
Polls in the past have shown that after Republicans go down this road, uh, it's good for their base. Uh, certainly, Matt Gates, Representative Matt Gates, really wants to see him be stronger on uh, spending, especially when it comes to the military. They were at, there was a deal that was being cut uh, that would involve uh, very significant cuts to the military, and Matt Gates said, "There's there's no way we're going to support that." So uh, Kevin McCarthy is in a very difficult situation because when these government shutdowns happen, Republicans pay more at the polls. And you see recent polls showing um, earlier this month, right after Labor Day, uh, people were saying in this in this uh, most recent poll were, that they were con very deeply concerned uh, that, that we're going to go down this road again. Um, the For the fifth time, we're at the brink of a government shutdown since 2010. And nearly eight in 10 voters in the poll said a shutdown should be avoided because it harms the economy. And seven in 10 said a shutdown would be to distract from the country's larger challenges. Well, Susan, thanks so much for weighing in. Always appreciate your insights. Appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely, Tracy. Thanks for having me.